In a video I made last week demonstrating how Adobe Illustrator users can get acclimated with the Affinity Designer workflow, many of you commented that the reason why you can't make the switch to Affinity Designer is because you often have clients that require that you prepare their work in Adobe's proprietary Illustrator format, which is the .ai extension. So in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can save your work in such a way that you can use it in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm even going to show you how you can make your very own .ai Illustrator file using a workaround in Affinity Designer. Before we get started though, be sure to join my mailing list to receive over 200 free design templates, including logos, infographics, avatars, and more. As a subscriber, you will get even more free templates each month. I'll have some information about that linked below if you want to check that out. So to get us started, I'll first demonstrate a simple example here, which consists only of plain vector paths. And then I'll show you a more complicated example that contains multiple artboards, layers, and all of these complicated effects. So if you're working with a file that's basically just plain vector paths, and I will zoom in on this to show you, everything here is just a simple vector path. Even the text has been converted to curves. If this is the case for you, then this is a pretty straightforward process. All you have to do is come up here to File, go to Export, and we're going to choose PDF from this list. And these are all the settings you'll want to have in place. I'll scroll, through, I'll scroll through here slowly so you can see it. The main thing is down here, we want to make sure we have Allow Advanced Features enabled. And down here where it says Embed Fonts, choose All Fonts. And once you have those settings in place, go ahead and click the Export button. Now I'm going to export this as logo.pdf and I'll click Save. And now I can come over here into my Finder and the file should be there. So what we're going to do now is change the name of this file from .pdf to .ai. And if you can't see the file extension in your Finder, just come up here to where it says Finder. This is for Mac users anyway. Come over here to Settings. And under the Advanced tab, make sure you have this setting enabled that says Show All File Name Extensions. Now, if you're a Windows user, in the folder, click on the Show button, or I think it says View, and then go down to Show, and it'll say File Name Extension. I'll put a video on the screen so you can see how it looks. And once you do that, just click on the file, click on it again, and change the file name from .pdf to .ai. And the reason why this works is because the .ai format is basically just a PDF document with Adobe's own proprietary wrapper around it. So if you change the name to .ai, Illustrator will recognize this as its own file, and your client will never know the difference. And to show you what I mean, I'll open up Illustrator. And I'm going to open up this document. I'll go to File Open. I'm going to choose my logo.ai file. And there is the logo as expected. Everything is in place. Nothing is grouped together. There's no clipping masks or anything. As far as your client knows, this is a source Illustrator file. Now let's have a look at a more complicated example. And the main reason I'm showing you this is because I want to demonstrate that this is not a perfect solution, what I'm teaching in this video. There are certain types of features and objects that if you try to open them with Illustrator, it's just not going to work. And I want to show you which objects causes these problems. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a complex document here with multiple artboards. You can see under each artboard, I have layer names that correspond with the text label that I placed under each artboard. And each object here, these are indeed text objects. Over here, I have regular basic shapes. These should transfer over without a problem. Over here, I have frame text, or text that I created with the frame text tool, which allows you to draw a rectangle and confine your text to that rectangle. Over here, I have text on a path. I have a gradient applied. And then down here, I have a clipping mask. I have an object that uses blend mode, so I took this logo and changed the blend mode to, like, make, to make it look like it is part of the t-shirt. And then over here, I have that very same logo with an adjustment layer applied, or an HSL adjustment. And then over here, I took the logo and applied quick effects to add an outline and a drop shadow beneath it. And then over here, I took our original logo from earlier and applied a vector mask over it. So these are all of the types of objects that will give you trouble when you try to open them with Illustrator. So let me show you what I mean. If I come up here to File and go to Export, I'm going to choose PDF again. Only this time, I want to make sure I come down here to where it says Area. By default, it's going to pick one of the artboards. You want to change this to Whole Document. So choose Whole Document here. Come down here to where it says Rasterize. This, po this part's really important. Make sure you have nothing selected. You don't want this to rasterize anything. And then we'll come down here. Allow JPEG Compression. We're going to turn that off. And then Color Profile. For whatever reason, when you open this document in Illustrator, it opens it as a CMYK 
color profile. I don't know why, even if it's RGB. So if you're working with an RGB document, just make sure to manually change it to sRGB so that you can open it as an RGB document. If it's a CMYK document, then you could just leave the default as it is and check the box that says embed profiles. And if I come down here further, make sure you include layers, make sure you include invisible layers as well. And embed fonts, we wanna make sure we embed all of the fonts so that your fonts will show up or your text items will show up as intended. And allow advanced features, that's important as well. Subset fonts, and it looks like everything here is good. So I'll scroll through this one more time if you wanna take a, another look just to double check, make sure you have everything set up correctly. And then I'll click the export button. And this time I'm gonna save this as testdocument.pdf. Click save. And then I will come over here and just like we did earlier, I will change the extension from .pdf to .ai. And now I will open this one with Illustrator. So I will press Command O and I will open this test document. Now this part's important where it says range, we wanna choose all. And then over here where it says import PDF pages as links, make sure to deselect that. If you leave that selected, you're not gonna be able to edit anything and then click OK. And you can see right off the bat, we already have a, a problem here because the artboards are arranged differently than they were as I had them arranged here, but that's not that big of a deal. But if I zoom in on this, you can see these objects, you can't really edit them just yet. They're kind of grouped and, and clipped together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command A or Control A to select everything. And I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna select ungroup. And then I'll right click it again and go to release clipping mask. And now everything should be released into separate objects. And if I zoom in, you can see what happened here. So the object with the layer mask is gone. The layer mask was removed because I guess Illustrator handles layer masks differently than Illustrator or Affinity Designer does. And this object here is kind of grouped and clipped together. So you'll have to right click this and go to release clipping mask. And you'll probably have to do that again. Right click, go to, well, actually let me click off of it. Okay, so this is not a clipping mask, but the boundary of this, the bounding box of this object takes up the whole artboard here. Uh, fortunately, the text object is still preserved, so I can grab my text tool and continue typing on that. Let me undo that. And then over here, the quick effects, as you would imagine, this is completely ignored because in Affinity Designer, quick effects is its own proprietary feature. There is no such feature in Illustrator. Over here, adjustments, Illustrator also doesn't have adjustment layers. The blend mode, I found this really interesting. It took the, let me put that back. I'm gonna right click this. If you notice it's functioning as a group together object, just right click it, go to release clipping mask. There we go. And now you can see it changed the blend mode of the shirt it looks like, but not the logo, which was interesting. And then over here, the clipping mask that I made, if I right click this and go to release clipping mask, you can see it preserved the image, but it only preserved the image insofar that it was confined to the bounding box of the clipped object or the circle. So if I come back over here into Affinity Designer, you can see what happened. This was the original object. Let me ungroup that. And if I release the clipping mask here, you can see the original image was much bigger. Let me pop that out of the mask. You can see this image was much bigger. However, in Illustrator though, it was made into a square that fits that circle. And speaking of layers, let me come up here to window and go to layers to show you what happened here. Everything gets placed on one layer. So if you expand the layer, you can see all of the individual layers. Uh, although they're not organized as I had them, they do retain some of the names though, as you can see in those labels there. So let me close out of that. Gradients, it does, pre it does preserve the gradient. So if I press the letter G on the keyboard, I can grab my gradient tool and I can edit this just like any other gradient in Illustrator. So that's good to see. You can work with gradients when you do this. And over here, text on a path, I thought this was really interesting. If you noticed, it preserves the text on a path, but it's not actually on the path. If you look closely, these are each individual text objects. Each letter is its own text object, as you can see by the baseline underneath it. So it looks like there are individual letters that were all rotated. And to show you what I mean, if I select this letter and grab my text tool and begin typing, you can see it just keeps typing down. Let me try to zoom out. There we go. It just keeps typing down in that direction. So let me undo that. And over here, the frame text tool, it didn't preserve the frame text. It took the text and created separate text objects on each line. So this is no longer a continuous text object as it is in Affinity Designer. If you sh to show you what I mean, let me ungroup this. 
This all here is a continuous text object. So if I were to select all of this and begin typing, you can see it's all confined to that box, but that doesn't happen over here in Illustrator. If I were to grab my text tool and do the same thing, it's all on one line. So that's something to keep in mind. Let me undo that. And the shapes, as you would imagine, the shapes are preserved as intended. If I grab my anchor points tool, you can see everything works as expected. And I think that should do it for this tutorial. So again, I just wanted to show you how you can do this. This is not a perfect solution by any means. However, some elements are preserved, such as text objects, gradients, and even clipping masks to a degree. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.